Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and today we are gonna do a full garden tour. I've got a bunch of stuff in here that needs to be harvested. So we're also gonna harvest as I go because I actually have a busy afternoon. It's about 7.30 right now. And I figured I'd get out here early in the morning, take you guys along because there's a lot of stuff going on in here. I also have two fall garden beds that are going here right now. There's a lot of changes since last time you were in here. So I thought it'd be fun to take you guys along to see the changes. And also <laughs> while I'm at it, we're gonna do some harvesting. I did bring my basket out here today. I'm notorious for not bringing my basket out into the garden. And this time of year, do not go out into the garden without a basket because you will always find things that are ready to be picked. So let's just get right into it. We have a pretty busy afternoon today, so that's why I wanna make sure I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone and get these things harvested so that we can enjoy the afternoon. Before we get into the garden, I kinda of wanna talk about some wood chips. I know I talk about wood chips all the time, but wood chips are so important to my garden. And I had two deliveries since last time you guys were here. I've had, well, this those two big piles there, that was one delivery, and then this pile here was one delivery. I'm five four, and these piles are almost as tall as me. And this was 100% free, and these wood chips right here are actually cedar wood chips these are beautiful oh my gosh they smell fantastic I got them from chipdrop.com I know I talk about that website all the time I'm not affiliated with that website but that is a fantastic free resource for you guys if you want free wood chips I'll leave them down in the description box below so what I'm gonna do with these cedar wood chips these are gonna be wood chips that I'm gonna use for between my raised beds to help with weed prevention and these chips are a mixture of a lot of leaves and they're chipped up way finer than the cedar. So these wood chips are the wood chips that I'm gonna be putting in my back to Eden style garden because they're gonna break down faster and they have a better carbon to nitrogen ratio. So I just wanted to tell you guys again, I love chipdrop.com. When one of the guys dropped these piles off, he's like, wow, looks like you have a busy weekend. So basically what this just means for me is this is a lot of hard work in the future for me, but I'm grateful to have it and it's 100% free. So now that we've talked about wood chips, because you know I love wood chips. Let's go ahead and get into the garden. I'm gonna turn you around and things are exploding right now. Like right here, look at this. This is a dream come true. It's funny how something so simple can make you so happy. This was supposed to be my loofah trellis, but loofahs, this is my loofah here and right there. They love heat and we did have a record breaking 115 degree couple days, but in general, we're not that hot. So I'm wondering if either, we just don't have the right climate here for loofahs and they're not doing well, or if it's my soil is depleted because my green beans are just growing beautifully. I actually can start to see some flowers starting. I believe that these are the blue lake pole beans here. And on the other side over here is where my dragon tongue beans are. And you can see it's already going all the way up and it's reached the top up here. How beautiful is that? So my dream is for these green beans to start cascading down this arch and, oh look, there's, there's a flower right here. Can you see that purple flower? These beans are stunning. I can't wait to show you guys pictures of these when they're fully grown. I planted dragon tongue bush beans last year and those are stunning beans too. I have some in the garden and if they're ready, I'll show you. But these are rattlesnake pole beans and on accident, one of these rattlesnake pole beans got mixed up in my seed packet. So I grew these on accident last year and that's why I wanted to make sure I grew them this year because they're absolutely stunning and they're really good. So now we're gonna move on from the arch trellis to my tomato trellis and oh my gosh, you guys, I am so happy with how this tomato trellis is holding up. I do know the soil in this area does need work for next year because I have some tomatoes planted in the ground way over there and they're thriving a lot more than these tomatoes. We are starting to get some fruit on the tomatoes. Those are some San Marzano's. Because we had those 115 degree days, I think that the tomatoes definitely slowed down just a little bit. Last year at this time, I feel like I had more green tomatoes on my plants, but I just found something that's pretty exciting that you and I are gonna harvest together for the first time this year. This was my first tomato to start getting any color and I think it's ready. So we are gonna pick that together today. I'm gonna give that to my husband actually. And then look what I caught out of the corner of my eye. These are called indigo rose. I've never grown these before and they're absolutely stunning. And there's tons of flowers on these plants. So that's gonna be super exciting when those are ready. One of my major goals this year with my tomatoes was to trellis them really well and keep them super pruned, which is what I've done really well on this trellis but I almost think that I went a little too crazy. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting each plant grow one sucker. And I think I just went a little too crazy with the pruning and actually two plants. This one is an example. You can see how small it is. I on accident, when it was about this tall, I pruned the top of it off. 
on accident and I waited three weeks to see if it would start growing another sucker, but it never did. And then when it finally started to, like six weeks later, it started growing them from the ground. So I'm gonna let this go. I don't think that this is gonna have time to produce anything for me, but that's just one thing where I did get a little crazy and I, I did that on two plants actually. I did it on this one as well and there's no green fruit on it, but there are a bunch of flowers. So I hopefully will get, oh no, it looks like we have one starting here. So that's exciting. So overall this trellis is fantastic. I'm gonna be investing in some more of these cattle panels for next year to grow a bunch more tomatoes on them because you'll see how I grew tomatoes in this next bed like I did last year. I've actually been much more organized with this than I was last year. It's just a whole lot easier to grow them on this. I'll probably put some of these trellises in my raised beds because the soil is better in my raised beds. And then my Dollar Tree zinnias that I planted there are looking stunning. So moving on from there, I have my tomato bed here that is kind of a hodgepodge. So the tomato plants that are in this trellis were actually tomato plants that I bought from starts because I had planted them all out from tomato plants that I had started from seed. But in April, we had a really late frost and it killed almost all my tomato plants. I think I had like 20 tomato plants die. And there were two in here in this bed that didn't die. And I'll show you guys those tomatoes, but also I had restarted that next day that they died. I started a bunch more tomatoes from seed indoors and on April 11th, which is really late. And these tomatoes have actually caught up to these tomatoes, which is pretty crazy. And there's something super exciting that I found in here last week. It was literally, I like, ah! It was a variety that I really, really, really wanted to grow. And I killed all of them in that freeze. And then when I reseeded the ones indoors, I couldn't get any of them to germinate. And so I was devastated that I wasn't gonna be able to grow any of these varieties of tomatoes. and. I found one and I think it's one that actually survived the freeze, which is kind of mind blowing. This tomato plant was actually one of the tomato plants that I saved seeds from last year. And it was one of the only ones along with one other one that survived that freeze that killed almost all my tomato plants back in April. And so this I'm excited about because last year was my first year saving seed. Now it is a yellow variety. I know super specific. I think like sun gold or no, not sun gold. Cause that's a cherry tomato, like sunburst or something, but it's a hybrid. And I didn't realize what hybrid meant when saving seed last year, because you guys know this is only my second year gardening. And so I have no idea how these tomatoes are going to turn out, but I'm just happy that this plant is producing fruit because I saved seed from it. And then there are just a hodgepodge of tomatoes in here. There's a bunch of volunteers. That is a volunteer and that one, it's hard to see. The only other tomato plant that I really wanna talk about in here with you guys is this one right here. Look at that cluster. This is a Berry's Crazy Cherry and there are supposed to be 40 to 50 tomatoes in one cluster. Here's another cluster and the flowers haven't even fully opened so this is gonna get crazy, hence the name. And you can just see all the blossoms in here that are gonna form. It's pretty incredible. Because I didn't label anything, I didn't know what any of my tomatoes were and I didn't know what this was until it started flowering. And that's why it's kind of caged up in all this random way is because what I was gonna do is actually let a couple tomato plants just go wild. Tomatoes are actually vines and they actually wanna grow on the ground and kind of vine out. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to let a couple of my tomato plants just do whatever they wanted. And so I've got one here that I'm letting just vine on the ground and I wanna see what's gonna happen. And I was doing that with my Berry's Crazy Cherry until I realized what it was. And then when I realized what it was, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get it trellised up. So I have one main branch growing up this post that I'm gonna tie twine around it and keep letting it grow up the post. And then I went ahead and grabbed one of these tomato cages to kind of support these two side shoots that have grown out of it. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. And I was thrilled when I saw that. And then in this tomato bed is where I'm doing this experiment where I'm doing the composting in place or chopping and dropping. So far it seems to be working just fine. It's probably composted already about halfway. And so we'll just continue to see what happens with that. And on the end of this bed, I have some Dollar Tree zinnias that are just stunning. I'm definitely only gonna buy my zinnia packets at Dollar Tree. And then here are my, here are my white marigolds. These things took forever to flower. They just started flowering like a week and a half ago. And today is July 24th. So they definitely are slow to mature. And then I have chamomile here and I harvest chamomile every couple days. It's so cute. So it's only about 7.30 in the morning and they curl up like this in the morning. So I usually harvest them in the afternoon when they're fully open. And it looks like there's a bunch that I need to come out here and harvest. I have about half a pint of chamomile harvested and inside ready for tea this winter. So let's move on to the pepper bed. I actually have some peppers in here to harvest. Along the entire edge was my lettuce. I took all that lettuce out and I actually composted that in place in another bed. And that just composted like really quickly. And then I planted cilantro along the edge and that hasn't sprouted yet. I have some peppers in here that are looking stunning. I could hardly grow any peppers last year. 
and these ones are already starting to size up pretty well. I have harvested some poblano peppers here. It looks like there's some really big peppers back there that need to harvest. Actually, I think these ones I need to wait because these are a sweet pepper and I think I need to wait until they turn red. So these ones aren't actually quite ready. I'm sure you could eat them green. Thai basil in here that I let go to flower for some pollinators. And then I've got a bell pepper there. I have in here all sorts of basil that I've been harvesting all the time. I'm gonna come in here and get some of these. I'm trying to harvest them quite heavily, very regularly, so that they don't bolt on me. They didn't bolt through that 115 degree weather. When you're harvesting basil, what you can do is you can kind of just pinch the top off. And if you look right there, where, which I just on accident damaged that one, where you have two new leaves coming out, that will actually, each one of those will create another branch, which will make an even bushier plant, which will exponentially increase your basil harvest. I have a ton of cayenne peppers in this bed. I am so thrilled. I mean, look at this one. I think pinching the top off those peppers really helped increase the harvest on this. And look, I have never grown this many. These are serrano peppers, and you can just see all the serrano peppers in here. I'm so happy about that. I'm gonna ferment these and make hot sauce out of the serranos, and hopefully I'll be making some red pepper flakes out of the cayenne peppers. Another really interesting thing in this pepper bed is that I planted these Dollar Tree green onions, and they actually are starting to grow bulbs. I mean, look at that down there. Those are actually, look at the size of this bulb. Some of these bulbs are actually bigger in size than the onions that I planted for bulbed onions. I was gonna harvest those green onions the other day and put them in the freezer as green onions, but when I noticed the size of those bulbs getting pretty big, I figured what I'm gonna do is just let them go and see what happens and see how big they get. I have some onions that are ready to harvest over there, and when I get to that, I'll show you what an onion looks like when it's ready to harvest. And so these have time to continue to grow in bulb size, so I'm gonna let them just go until they tell me they're ready for harvest. So moving on from that pepper bed, right along here is my bean experiment, where I have all these green beans in these pots and it's working. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video on which green beans are in this pot because whatever variety of green bean is in this pot is definitely thriving the best out of any of the varieties that I have planted. They all are starting to produce green beans, but the plants themselves are actually struggling a little bit more, the ones that are in these pots, and I think it's because of the variety. I can definitely tell, my husband just let the dogs up to go potty, that these plants are doing a lot better and a lot healthier than the rest of the varieties in here. So I'm gonna watch that video so I, I know what varieties in here so I can plant this next year in our patio garden. We're gonna do a whole series on growing in small spaces in containers on a patio. And so I wanna make sure I know what variety this is because this is doing very well. This bed was my garlic bed. I actually have a whole video on harvesting 547 heads of garlic, I think. And I planted right in here, that's broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and some carrots right here and they've already started to sprout and it's super fun to watch that. You might find this funny, but I actually did label a little bit. I literally just threw the package because the package was empty right next to the plant. So right here is the broccoli. This is broccoli. And then over here, I have cabbage. So I just threw the cabbage package right here. It's already sun faded. This is golden acre cabbage. Then I know down here is the cauliflower and right down there is the carrots. Moving on to this bed, this was my onion bed and I planted a bunch of fall stuff in here. Now this I did not label. I know that this is spinach and I planted some bush variety peas there. And then right in here with along with some weeds, I can see, oh, there it sprouted. That is some Chinese cabbage that I have planted in here. And then I have these leeks in here that are going to seed. So I really need to come out here and harvest those and do something with them. But I just haven't had the time. And then I have some carrots in here that I planted after I had planted some spinach. And these aren't quite ready yet, but they're looking beautiful. These are definitely the prettiest carrots that I've grown so far this year. The carrots that I planted in my tomato beds, the rabbits keep eating the tops off of them. And I think it's stunting the growth of them. And this tomato trellis, I'm really happy with it. It's working really well. It's kind of a jungly mess, but that's not because the tomato tomato plants are a jungly mess. It's actually because I have peas growing in here. These peas survived that 115 degree weather and they are producing a ton for me. These are some Oregon snow peas, I think, so I need to get out here and harvest them. Coming from this tomato trellis, let's talk about the potatoes. The potatoes are doing really well. It's definitely time here in the next week or two to come out and harvest them. I'm really excited about doing that. These ones right here have died back and they definitely need to be harvested. And this is actually making me nervous. I'm seeing that and that's a new sprout. So these potatoes died back about two weeks ago. 
So I'm hoping that my potatoes aren't sprouting for a new set of potatoes because I was kind of waiting for these ones to die back a little bit more so I could harvest them at the same time. But I think I definitely need to move that up on my priority list. My sweet potatoes in my straw bales look like they're suffering a little bit. I think it's probably a nutrient thing because they are in straw bales. So what I'm gonna do this weekend actually is I'm gonna go run and, oh, and then I got this weird, weird slime mold and it was like bright, bright yellow and now it's kind of dying back. I don't know what that came from, but they definitely look like they're starting to show signs of stress. And so I need to Google this and figure out what's going on. Maybe they need nutrients or something, but the plants are growing but the leaves don't look super healthy. So I'm sure it has to do with nutrients in the straw bales. When I go to show you my next bed, which is right here, this is my sweet potato bed and my potato bed that were volunteers. And these sweet potatoes look so much healthier. There is some spotting on some of them, but overall the plants look way healthier. And that was just an experiment trying to grow sweet potatoes in straw bales, knowing that it might not work out. In this bed right here, which looks like there's a friend visiting us, Hello there. It was a volunteer squash plant and I didn't know what type of variety of squash it is and it looks like it is spaghetti squash. And I'm trying to let this plant grow out this way. Walking around in here, it looks like this potato plant is ready to be harvested because there's some potatoes popping out of the ground, which I don't like that. I don't have time to, actually, let's just do this. Let's just do it, we're pulling it up. <laughs> you guys, okay, I was not, look at, oh my goodness. We're doing it. We did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, there's this too. Well, this is fun. I didn't know I was gonna be harvesting potatoes today. I'm gonna have to come out here. Oh my gosh. With, um, guys, look at these. Oh my goodness. This was a volunteer. Look how big that is. Well, that's a rock. Well, now that my hands are officially disgusting, I am going to come out with a shovel later to make sure I got them all. But look at all this harvest from one volunteer potato. Look at that. And then I'm gonna stick this up there. We're supposed to be heading to breakfast in about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna come back and just make sure I didn't miss any. But look at this and look at the size of this potato. Okay, let me go rinse my hand off real quick. So one thing I did notice here in this potato, sweet potato bed is look at this beauty. Oh, there's a couple of them. This might be the most interesting shaped cucumber out there. And then I noticed that there's another one right here, a huge one here, and another one right there. My gosh. I think I'm gonna let this guy go for another day. This is the variety that I planted here. This was a start that I purchased. These are the first three cucumbers that I've harvested this year. I'm not honestly a huge, huge fan of cucumbers, so I only need one plant. I'm not planning to do any pickles or anything like that, so I'm gonna put these in the basket. Well, that was an unexpected surprise. And then in this bed here, this was an experiment bed. I had had some onions that had overwintered and I'm letting them go to seed and they have, and these are almost ready to harvest. So I'll bring you guys along as I harvest these seeds. They're not quite ready yet. I also have a bunch of kale in here that is getting kind of crowded out by these black beans. I just experimented and threw a bunch of black beans in between the kale and the black beans are doing really well. They're already starting to grow pods on them. I have been harvesting a lot of kale, not as much as I'd like, I will be harvesting a ton more because that bed is starting to go crazy. In here, I have some cabbage. Now, I'm really sad with how my cabbage is doing. This cabbage should have been ready and harvested a long time ago, but it never got really big, and I don't know why. I mean, this is tiny. Some of them are getting a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna come out and probably start eating them just for dinner. Oh, this one is actually pretty good size. So maybe for dinner this week, we'll eat this cabbage but I would have expected my cabbages to do a lot better this year. So I'm hoping the ones that I planted for fall are gonna do better. My Swiss chard is doing really well. I keep harvesting that. These were some more carrots I planted. And then this was some red cabbage here that is actually just starting to size up too. So, and then this potato plant doesn't look good. Okay, 
I'm, that does no potatoes, so we're gonna take that out. This one got sunburnt when we had that really hot weather, so I probably should come out and harvest this so that it doesn't start to rot. So we are gonna be eating a lot of cabbage in our future. My strawberry bed is basically done for the year. It's growing a ton of runners, so I need to come through and figure out what to do with the runners. My asparagus is done, but this bed is just hanging out until next year. This experiment bed, growing this kale for my chickens and for us, is starting to thrive. I've actually come out here and harvested a bunch of kale a couple times. I just come in and I take my hands and I just break the leaves off. And they'll continue to keep producing more kale for me. We're gonna go feed these to the chickens. This isn't gonna hurt the plant at all. As long as you leave the main stem right there intact, it'll continue to produce more and more leaves for you. Coming from that kale bed, this is still an embarrassing bed that I didn't do anything with. I'm starting to do some composting in place here. These were the tops of my garlics that I harvested. Coming around here, I have some more red cabbage. This is probably gonna be a fall harvest of red cabbage. And then in here, these beans are doing so fantastic. These are provider bush beans, and I'm so happy with how they're doing in this bed. Next year, I am already planning this whole entire bed is gonna be provider bush beans, and I'm not gonna plant as many down over there where that gets more sun. If they're doing well in this bed, this bed doesn't get as much sun as the ones in the front do. So I know that the provider beans do well in this bed, so I'm just gonna plant the entire bed with provider beans so that I can plant the really sun loving stuff closer to the front. I've already done a few harvests of green beans. The provider bush beans are so prolific and I've got three gallon freezer bags in the freezer and I've given some away to my family, but I know that I need to get out here and do a whole nother harvest of them, but that's probably gonna take me 20 minutes and I don't have time for that because we're heading to breakfast. Oh my gosh, see I have a hard time not picking them though because look at these. Sorry if you hear barking, my neighbor's dogs have all woken up and so you might hear a little bit of barking. Sorry about that. Oh, see, I can't help myself. I see a green bean, I gotta pick it. Coming from the green bean bed, I have some dragon tongue beans in here and these are so stunning. Let me show you how stunning these green beans are. These are a bush bean variety. Look at that. I'm letting these peas go to seed so I can collect seed along with, this is that purple celery. It's going to seed and I'm gonna collect the seeds from that. I need to come out here and harvest all my celery. It is almost ready, or probably ready. I think I could harvest these, look at them. I had planted celery root, but I thought it had all died when I started it from seed. I started this back in January and I see that there's one celery root in here. That is actually my husband and I's favorite vegetable, but it's notoriously very difficult to grow. So I am so happy that I see that there. Another plant I saw that was going to seed is this beet plant. And I'm gonna let that go to seed and try to harvest some beets. In here, I have some second planting of cauliflower that's starting to bulk up in size, along with Brussels sprouts. So I'm hoping that these Brussels sprouts are ready to harvest by the fall. Down here, I have a whole ton of parsley. I've already done a huge harvest of parsley. I do have a video on that if you wanna see that. And I wanted to show you this beet. Look at this thing. That thing is huge and ready to go. I now have quite a few beets in my house, so I need to start doing something with beets. I'm not a huge beet lover, but there is one way that I really, really enjoy eating beets, and I will show you guys that recipe. Now in here, in this bed, I have black beans all throughout this first two thirds of the bed. And then I have, that are starting to produce pods. And then right along here, I have more provider beans that I keep harvesting from. And then I have some peas that I can still harvest from that are doing really well. Moving from this bed, I have my winter squash bed here that is just going bananas. And in the craziness of this winter squash bed, look at what I have. Some fall decorations growing. And they're absolutely adorable. I have one jack-o'-lantern pumpkin here. And look at this jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Never grown a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, but you can see by the size of my hand, this thing is just growing so fast. I have a ton of, oh, look at that. Hey, friend. I see bees in here. This is the perfect time to be out here. There's hundreds of bees typically. I have a ton of spaghetti squash. I'm actually gonna remove this leaf. This area has just exploded. It, I just love it. I absolutely love it. I don't know if I should do this again next year because it does make it difficult sometimes when I'm moving the hose around because I have to be careful not to 
run over these vines because I'm just letting them go crazy. But I have a ton of spaghetti squash. This is my first butternut squash that I see. But I have onions that are all planted in here that are ready to harvest, if I can even get in there. And you know an onion is ready to harvest when the leaves, the green part, tips over and when you push on it and it feels hollow on the inside. Oops, that one didn't. Look at the size of that. This is definitely the biggest onion I've ever grown, along with this one. I've had quite the journey with onions this year. My biggest takeaway when growing large onions is to make sure you don't plant them too early. That was my biggest mistake, I think. I also have in my squash bed some volunteer tomato plants. This is a volunteer tomato right here that I just kind of have in this cage. This is also a volunteer tomato plant that I have growing in here. This bed, along with that bed over there, were my two tomato plant beds. And there's just so many volunteers. There is another beautiful spaghetti squash. I have my zucchinis and yellow squash in here as well. I'm doing this experiment here on this one where I took a tomato cage and I put it around this yellow squash and it is making this yellow squash grow vertical, which is kind of interesting. I saw that on a reel and I thought I would give it a try and it seems to be working. I also wanna show you in this bed, I have some zucchinis along with this patty pan. This is the first patty pan of the year I'm harvesting. And then I noticed this morning that one of my striped zucchinis is starting to grow. That's the first striped zucchini that I have in here. Oh my gosh, look what I just saw. These are my Black Beauty zucchinis and they are definitely producing the most zucchinis for me. Surprising this year, I'm not getting near as many zucchinis as I did last year. There's a couple other winter squash that I wanna show you in this bed. I found this one the other, oh my gosh, it's doubled in size. I can barely get in here to show you, but look at the size of this thing. This is so thrilling. And then I do just have spaghetti squash growing everywhere. Spaghetti squash seem to be the most prolific thing that I'm growing. I have a sugar pie pumpkin here, along with a little sugar pie pumpkin there, and just tons and tons of spaghetti squash. This was the first one to start growing and it's huge. Look at the size of this thing. And then I also have some Cinderella pumpkins that are already starting to grow. Look at this beauty. I have probably six of these growing. You can see there's one there and one there. So I was just showing you these and I just saw in the corner of my eye, there's some sort of pumpkin here. This probably is a blue Hubbard pumpkin of some sort or a blue uh, sweet meat pumpkin maybe. This jungly mess is exactly what I wanted and it just is looking so beautiful and it's growing into the corn patch and the corn patch is actually starting to do something. Last time you guys were out here, my corn were about this tall. Now I did plant about 500 corn seeds and clearly there's not 500 corn stalks, but I am happy with what I'm seeing. They are starting to produce some corn and I need to come out here and pollinate them, hand pollinate them. And then I have calendula growing all in here and I'm letting this calendula reseed and I just want this to be a calendula field next year, I think. So I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled with that. Now moving on, my tomatillos are starting to go bananas. They are starting to produce some fruit. When I come out here in the mornings, they are usually just swarmed with bees. So that's super fun to see. These tomatoes that are in the ground here are actually doing so much better. Their health, the stalk size, when I look at like the stalk, the leaves, they just look so much healthier than the varieties that I have planted over there. Now I did have my chicken coop over here, so I don't know if that has something to do with it, that there's just a lot more nutrients over here. And they're just, oh my gosh, let me show you guys. So beautiful. There's tons of green tomatoes. These are just looking so much more farther along than the tomatoes that I have over in the other in-ground tomato bed. I did plant provider bush beans between all these tomato plants as an experiment and they're doing great. I've harvested a ton of green beans from here. Moving from there, I have my raspberry patch. I've been out here collecting raspberries, probably not as much as I should, but they're doing pretty well. Coming around here, this was also an experiment. This is one of my, my wine barrels where I've got some herbs. I just harvested a couple days ago, a ton of sage, and I did throw in some provider green beans in here and they are starting to produce. There's a, quite a few in here that need to be harvested. Moving on from there, I have in here 
I have some calendula that I harvest every day. I have some more tomato plants in here. I have carrots. These carrots are almost ready to harvest. I planted a second succession of carrots, but I did that right before that heat wave. So I only probably have like 10 carrots growing along that bed. And then right along here, I had a ton of cilantro that was bolted that's going to coriander seed. And I harvested that two days ago and I'm letting it dry. And then I'm gonna come out this afternoon and get some peas actually planted in here for the fall. This is the same bed, just the other view. This is where I had planted a second succession of carrots right before that heat wave and it's not doing anything. Well, that's not true. There are a few carrots right here that have actually sprouted, but I have this tomato plant. This was another volunteer tomato plant and I'm kind of just letting it do its thing. It has a ton of fruit on it, which these ones I should probably get up off the ground um, so they don't you know, rot or whatever. But I figured it would be kind of fun to do an experiment and just see what happens to a tomato plant. If you don't do anything to it, because that's a volunteer, it's already looking, oh, there's a weed. It's already looking really strong and healthy and I'm just gonna see what happens. Tomatoes are vines. They wanna grow on the ground. They wanna creep along the ground and that's why it's always hard to get them to grow straight up because they don't wanna grow straight up. So I figured it'd be fun to kind of see what happens there. From there to here, this bed has got a lot going on. I have some more Dollar Tree zinnias in here. These are just stunning. Along with some of my, oh, it looks like they're going to seed. Some of my white marigolds, calendula that hasn't decided to open up yet for the day. I have a ton of peppers in here. I had a ton of onions, which I still do along here, but I've already harvested a bunch of those. Like this one I think is ready. Yep, so we're gonna take that one. That's a good size. I'm happy with that. This is another Walla Walla. I have tons of herbs in here. This is lemon basil. I have carrots in the middle here that need to be harvested. Here's a pepper plant. This here is another volunteer tomato plant that's looking really healthy that I am trellising up. I have a ton of parsley planted around these pepper plants that I've been harvesting. Here's a pepper plant that's doing really well. It's nice and tall. There's another volunteer tomato plant I should probably get out of here. And then my echinacea here, and it's starting to get pretty big. But I need to look and see when echinacea should flower because that's been in the ground forever and it doesn't, I don't see any buds or anything. So it doesn't look like it's about to flower anytime soon. Coming from the main garden, we've got our orchard and this plum tree that's been struggling that I've talked to you guys about a couple times. It's really not doing good. My husband actually came out here and cut all the dead stuff off, but I have a feeling that these branches too, that the whole tree's not gonna make it. I don't know if these are gonna produce anything but there's a whole bunch of branches in here and that's the stuff that he cut off. This tree is probably half the size that it was earlier this year. But my other fruit trees are doing really well. These are my pears. These are looking so beautiful. They're definitely sizing up. There were some things that did not do well. Anything that was exposed to the sun, so this is just gonna rot and there's quite a few apples that got sunburnt. But anything that was covered by leaves and out of the sun is doing really well. These are my Asian pears and they have just exploded this year. Can you see up there, that's, those are two, three sunburnt pears. Those are just gonna Go to the chickens probably. My apples are definitely starting to size up. They have some blemishes on them. These apples I will make into applesauce and I did that last year and they turned out beautiful. But there is some sunburnt apples in here too. This apple tree was the one that got hit the most with the most damage. And so there definitely is quite a bit of damage in here, but there's still like these apples in here are just stunning. They're sizing up really nicely and there's no blemishes. This apple tree seems to do a lot better it doesn't get those marks on it like the other apple tree seems to do. And if you've been following me for any length of time, this apple tree did not produce any apples last year. And this year it does have a, quite a few apples on it. And this tree did not get sun damage on it as much. It must have been protected from the sun. We've got some pretty big evergreen trees up here. My fire pit area that's in the middle of my orchard has just become a disaster. It's kind of embarrassing. It's basically just a pile of stuff that needs to be burned and then a bunch of weeds because I haven't been able to get in here and weed whack. But I definitely can't burn anything right now because we are definitely on a burn ban. It hasn't rained since March, which is pretty crazy for us. We typically are notorious for having very dry summers but we had a very dry spring as well and so for it to not have rained since March is just crazy. The blueberries are basically done. I spent two days ago making a ton of blueberry jam and I got a bunch in the freezer and we're gonna do some yummy recipes with those blueberries. My dad and sister were actually responsible for doing the most of the harvesting of those blueberries which was really nice. I did get out there twice and do second harvest and third harvest but they did the majority of it which was really nice because I just did not have the time. This was definitely a very productive day out in the garden. I probably this afternoon if I have time this evening will get out and try to harvest a bunch more green beans but I just don't have the time for that because that does take time to dig in there and get them all right I gotta get inside my husband's texting me my husband's saying we're going to breakfast with or without you I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me in my garden 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, go ahead and consider subscribing or right here, some videos will pop up. You can go watch those. I hope you guys have a great day. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys. So I just got inside and I'm going to give this first tomato to my husband to try. Yay. We have a friend over too. He's weird. He's weird. Mm-hmm. He's just so good. <laughs> he's just smiling. So juicy and sweet. Is it good? Mm-hmm. It's really good. What kind is that? I think like a sun gold or something. Mm. Winner. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's being weird. All right. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.